I'm Peter Block, and it is uh, day three, actually, at uh, Philadelphia at the American Heart Association annual meeting. I'm here for On the Scene. On, on my left is Matt Budoff from the <clears throat> UCLA, a little bit warmer in UCLA than it is here in chilly Philadelphia. Matt is uh, presenting or has presented Evaporate, uh, sort of a funny name for a trial that has to do with fish oil. But the short version is, Matt, that you're going to tell me what this trial is about. And then we'll talk about a little what it means because it's an important trial and it's another one of these uh, icosapen ethyl trials that looks positive. Yeah, so uh, Evaporate is looking at plaque progression or hopefully regression of atherosclerosis. That's thus the name. So basically it's a mechanistic study to look at the benefits of the REDUCE-IT trial. The REDUCE-IT trial was four grams of icosapentethyl, reduced cardiovascular events by 25%. And there's been some debate about how it benefits patients. Right. So I asked you before we started this uh, little interview about the differences between icosapentethyl and fish oil and asked you whether or not if I went to the drugstore and got 10 pounds and ate two pounds a day, whether that would be equivalent. What's your answer to that? It's an important one. Yeah, so I think that the, the difference is, is that when we talk about icosapentethyl or the evaporate results or the reduce it results, we're talking about pure EPA. And the problem is, is if you eat a lot of fish or if you get the traditional fish oils like Lovasa or other products out there, it's DHA and EPA. And DHA raises LDL, which I think may offset some of the benefits. So it's a little bit good and a little bit bad what icosapentethyl just does the pure reducing, uh, uh, I mean, reduces LDL and, and increases HDL, is that correct? And, and uh, lowers triglycerides. Yeah, yeah, yes. of course, lowers. Yes. Well, the triglycerides are really the thing that's important about icosapentethyl, and we always forget that. Isn't that correct? Yes, and there's some debate about exactly what the impact of just lowering triglycerides are, and that's why we did the evaporate study to see if there's something beyond just triglyceride lowering that may be happening that's good for the patient to result in a positive outcome. Okay, so here we are with evaporate. Let's get there to the nitty gritty. Tell me about the outcomes. This is uh, looking at plaque, how did you do it, CT? So we did CT, we did serial CT angiography, mm -hmm. uh, pre-specified zero, nine months, and 18 months. So what we're presenting uh, is, is the nine month data. Right, and that's important because this is a relatively short follow-up compared to other trials that have looked at regression of atherosclerosis. Absolutely. This is one of the shortest. And okay. uh, we wanted to take an early look, so we pre-specified that and took a statistical hit for yep. doing that, but ne thus we were able to present the data today. But you're going to follow up with longer-term follow-up in any case. We'll see what happens to that. Absolutely. All right. So let's cut to the chase. Tell me about the outcomes. Yeah. So the, uh, the outcomes were five out of the six markers of plaque progression showed slowing under the influence of icosapentethyl as compared to placebo. So it did slow plaque progression. The primary endpoint was what we call low attenuation plaque or the vulnerable plaque. That slowed by 21 percent, but that did not hit um, uh, significance to stop the overall trial. To stop the trial, we would have needed a p-value of less than 0 0.006, and thus the trial will continue for 18 months. Good. So I looked at those data and looked at your slides. I cheated, and uh, it turns out the fibrofatty plaque is one of the things that's least uh, sort of affected by this or seems to be. So what do you think is going on with there? there? What's, what, what's the mechanism here? Yeah, so I think that uh, we saw a non-calcified plaque go down, yeah. p-value 0.01. We calcified saw Calcified plaque went down. Calcified plaque went down. Total yeah. plaque went yeah. down with a p-value of less than 0.004. Right. So that was all positive. The only one that went up, not significantly, but did go up as a trend, was fibrofatty plaque, and that's very interesting. And I don't know if that's just an early noise because the p-value was 0.6, or whether that is a trend that we need to, to see. So I think that we're going to need to see the 18-month well, yeah. data to understand. That'll be very important, and I, th I think there's still a lot to learn about this drug, but nonetheless, very positive for now. I think so. I think it adds a nice mechanistic benefit to what we've already seen. Um, the one other thing I wanted to just mention is we the mineral oil has been of great concern to some people. So what we also did is took our placebo group, which was on mineral oil, and compared it to a non-mineral oil, cellulose uh, a cohort of patients with the same methodology, and there was no difference yeah. in plaque progression. Yeah, I saw that as well, and I think that's an interesting point. So your controls are actually pretty good controls. We think so, and, yeah. and uh, we're hopeful that this will at least quell some of the concern of mineral oil yeah. and now focus the, the, the discussion on, on icosapentethyl. Okay, one last question for you having to do with the clinical side of this. So uh, it looks like icosapentethyl may very well be approved by 
the FDA, or hopefully a lot of people think it should be. And if so, should you take it for plaque progression? Well, so that's a great question, and I think at least our early results would say it does seem to slow plaque. If you look at total plaque and non-calcified plaque, the two that have outcomes associated with them, it did have a nice effect. But again, I would, I would caution saying this is early data, and I'd like to see the 18-month data before I make a firm recommendation. Uh, a humble recommendation. Thank you, Matt.